Okay, here in this video I will explain how to set up a node for the Waves network. Um, basically we will just follow the description on the GitHub pages, um, which is basically a how-to on the installation of a node, but some people ask me to make a video about it, so here it comes. Okay, we will start in Terminal. Um, I'm running on a Mac computer currently. Um, if you have a Windows PC, you can just install PuTTY or any other SSH client you would prefer. Here on a Mac, you have an SSH client already installed. You can just start the terminal here and then you can connect to your server. Um, I'm currently running a box on DigitalOcean um, and I can connect to it via SSH-L, then the username, which is root in my case, and the IP address of the server. Of course, you can install a Waves node with any other user you have on the box. You, it's not necessarily uh, run via root, um, but as DigitalOcean um, offers me a root account, um, I think that's the easiest to show. Later on, if you permanently want to run it, um, you should definitely not use the root account for running the server, but the commands will be pretty much the same. Some of the commands would need a sudo before, um, but I can go into details via the installation. So we will connect first to the server. Um, I'm asked to enter my password for the server. I typed it wrong, so when I typed it correct, um, I'm logging in currently, or I'm logged in currently, and we will now just follow the steps from the installation procedures. Um, first of all, we need to install um, the Java 8 JDK originally from Oracle. So these are the steps that we need to take here. The first thing, I just copy the command here, is for adding the DEP um, packages to the sources list, which I can just insert here. So this is now added. We can later on also see how we can check if, the, if these commands have been successful. Um, we will also do this for the second line. This actually adds the DEP source packages to the sources list. This should also be successful. How can we check if it's successful? Well, basically this command adds this line here, this DEP HTTP, then this web address precise main to this file, etc apt sources list. And the same for the DEP source file. So we should have two lines now in our etc apt sources list file. And we can check this by just looking at the file, for example, with less etc apt sources list. And we should see those lines that we just added. And those are the two at the very bottom of the file. So these two commands have been successful already. We can leave with just typing a Q here and we are back to the console. So the first two commands have been successful. Now we have to add a certain server to um, the APT system. APT is basically the package manager for Ubuntu or for Debian based Linux distributions such as um, Ubuntu for example. So we add this key here also. This one that was also successful. Now we have to update the list of packages because we have added new packages, basically the, the Java packages here from the first two lines. So we have to update the repository. This depends on the internet connection, how, how long this takes. Here with DigitalOcean, it's quite, quite um, fast. And then we can install the um, Oracle 8 JDK here. I had some problems and some other users also reported about problems before. Therefore, we slightly modify the line that we have here. We do not just type apt-get install oracle java 8 installer, um, but we slightly change it by adding a minus y here. This is just for not asking if we really want to install it. So we are really sure we want to do it. So the client does not have to ask us again. Ah, here I have a typo already. Oracle, oh, quite hard to type actually. Um, Oracle Java 8 minus installer. 
and this should install right away without asking if we are sure because we added the minus y. Um, here we are asked for some um, licenses that we have to accept. Of course we want to accept the licenses um, and also the Oracle binary code license we want to accept um, otherwise we will not be able to install it. So this again takes some time depending on the uh, internet connection you are currently running on so don't mind if it takes a little bit longer. Um, this was basically for installing Java 8 directly from Oracle. Um, this has nothing to do so far with the node installation itself, um, but this is just the preparation that we need. Another preparation that we need is that we need to install an unzipping tool. So we do this by typing up to get install unzip. Um, this also takes some time and if we have done this then we are ready to actually install the wave software I would just download it from the releases um, let's see my internet connection here is not the fastest so it might take some time um, we want to have the latest release which is currently testnet version 0 0.2.1 we will download this year waves minus version 0.2.1 minus testnet.zip. Um, I would just copy the link here. So I would go to, this means in English, copy link address. Um, and I would just paste it here. Um, we can download things from the internet with the tool wget on Linux. And we will paste the URL that we just copied. If you are not able to copy it here, you can also um, look up the link here. You will see it down there. It's github.com waves platform waves releases download version 0.2.1 and then the file. And if we do this with wget, it will download the zip file. Again, this will take some time, of course. Um, Afterwards, we have to unzip the zip file. So if we look at the file system now, we, have, we see that we have downloaded the file. Now we will unzip it with unzip and the file name. And this will basically give us two new files. It will give us one dep file that we will be able to install. Dep are installation files for Debian-based Unix distributions. And we will already have a Waves testnet JSON, which is basically our configuration file that we later on need to run the node. Um, first, we will install the, the dep package. This is done by dpkg minus e for installation and the name of the dep package, which is waves underscore 0 0.2.1 underscore testnet dot dep. This installation should be quite fast. It's not so big. So we are now we have now installed it already. And if everything was successful so far, we will have a waves um, binary that we can execute here. And this will not be working because we don't have provided a configuration file already. But this shows you that you have installed the node software successfully and now we have to check how we configure it. This is also documented um, on the Waves GitHub pages. Don't worry, you don't have to, to copy the URLs here. I will provide them along with the videos. Um, but here is a section how to configure Waves node. You have to go there. There is first again the installation, what you have to do for um, installation of Java and even SBT. SBT you only need um, if you want to compile the sources yourself. Um, but this, if you are interested in this, drop me a message and I can do a video on this also. What we need here is we scroll down to the configuration section and here is a step-by-step -step, um, explanation of what we need to do. So first of all, we need to set the wallet and the API key hash in the Waves testnet JSON to an empty string because we have not configured it. You can do this on the... Um, console by looking at the well, by editing the following file this waves testnet json file here this is, you can do this by using vim which is an editor um, for the command line 
and if we type vimwavestestnet.json we are able to edit this file and here we will see we have an entry called wallet seed that's the entry here that should be empty which it is already and we should have another entry called api key hash that's the one over here and that is also empty currently so that is configured correctly um, if you want to leave vim it's quite critical if you use it for the first time you have to hit escape once and then you have to write double point w for writing the changes q for quitting and an explanation mark for really executing those two commands and then you are back on the command line so this is quite critical if you if you are not so experienced with vim this might lead to some problems of course you can edit the um, configuration file with any other um, command line editor that you want to use like emacs or anything else you have installed on on your machine okay so now we are ready to to start up the system um, that's also described here we run the node now with the command waves dot or waves waves testnet json so as a first parameter we provide the configuration file that we've just edited uh, again a typo waves testnet json so this should start up the node now this takes some time again but here we see that we started the server with the configuration file waves testnet json um, here we have to type our wallet seed or we can just type enter for generating a random one if we have one we can already provide one if we don't have one such as in my case currently I would just hit enter and it will generate um, one for me so now the server starts and we can then access the server at this port 6869 but not under this IP address because we are running the server on our digital ocean um, droplet here and so I have to use the IP address of the digital ocean server which I just copy here um, in your case you have to to use the IP address of the server you are using um, basically the one that you provided with the SSH login already and then we have to change the port to 6869 and this should bring us to the um, swagger user interface of our node and we need to go there because we want to generate an API key and this should be done via the endpoint utils hash secure I will show you how to find this here you have different web service endpoints and one is utils and here you find utils hash secure you can hit here on the, on the post for example and here you can reply a, um, an API key for example this is our test API key you can try it out here and you will get um, a hash value of this string that you provided there of course you should take something that is way more secure than, than I did here but this is just for showing you how it works um, you now have two possibilities you can as it's explained here you can call scorex stop this should be done via this here via the the user interface again um, corex stop this should stop the server um, basically when we are back here we see that the server is stopped now you could also just um, hit control c in your terminal and this will also stop your server so you have two possibilities to do this here now we have to enter the configuration file again just waves test that json and now we have to enter the ap the hash of the api key that we just generated which is this one here again i hit escape i hit double point wq explanation mark and now we can see or let's do it with cut testnet json so with the we see f two things or one thing has changed here it's the api key hash value here that has changed um, and we can now run the server so waves again we type waves waves testnet json 
and if we want to run the server for a longer time we need to add um, this here this will automatically start the server in the background so if we do this our server will be up and running in a few seconds again um, and then for a for a new installation of the server it then starts to sync sync means that it has to download the blockchain so every transaction that was done before in the blockchain the whole blockchain history needs to be downloaded needs to be synced to your server um, you can check if this works by going again to your Swagger user interface um, under the debug endpoint you will have um, an endpoint called debug slash info and if you try that out you will actually get the information on which state hate you are currently so this is this is the blocks the number of blocks that are already known to your server so if the server is syncing this number should increase over time yeah. so this will take some time um, but this is how you can check um, if your server syncs or not Here these messages are perfectly okay um, there are some nodes in the network that are no longer valid so you might have things like fail to connect to some servers um, that's not a problem at all um, and it's also quite usual that your server takes some time to sync to the to the network um, I have another server running so we can check for example one of my servers is running under this address, terrog nornde 6869 and we can check here for the, um, where is the debug, here it's debug and info, let's see what is the current height of the network, the current network height is 78,648 blocks in the network, um, we are here on block 4,441 yeah still so this will still take some time to um, to sync um, along with the with the blog post that I will do for the video I will also show you some um, outputs that you will see in the scorex log file so this is something I have not yet shown you um, I will just log out of the server and log in again because then I don't have these um, logging messages anymore um, and I will show you where the log file is that I'm referring to in the written part of the of the blog post that I will do um, if you look at the file system with ls you will find a file that is called scorex.log and this is basically the file you can look at it with tail minus f for getting the last lines scorex dot log and this is basically the file where you, where you will find all the debug outputs that your node is writing um, I will show you some examples in the blog post on how you see um, if blocks are synced and, and not so basically this is all it takes for installing the node um, yeah please try it out have fun and if you have questions don't hesitate to contact me via slack or just leave a post to the um, blog entry that I will do probably on steamit.com. Okay, have fun guys. Bye.